Homewood used to be a beautiful place. You couldn't even imagine the stores, the movies, and what we had out here was like a new, a new paradise. It was, it was life. We were living, we were living life then. We have an identity in Homewood. Like there's a, I, when you say you're from Homewood or you're doing work in Homewood, that means something. We got a history, good and bad. Before Martin Luther King got assassinated, Homewood was a black mecca, had everything. You could imagine, I'm sure y'all have heard the stories, maybe seen pictures of all of the movie theaters and all of that stuff. I mean, glory days of Homewood. After the 68 riots, a lot of storefronts, houses, and businesses were burned out. So the goal of Operation Better Block was to rebuild that, get a rate, um, eradicate that blight. Following the MLK assassination, Riots erupted in Pittsburgh April 15, 1968. The neighborhoods that were most affected were the Hill District, Northside, and Homewood. The riots led to six days over 100 businesses were vandalized or looted, with ordinance setting 500 fires, areas most affected are still recovering. It's a heavy area from all the way up to, this is where bad gangs started at in Pittsburgh, started in Homewood. And then when, you know, in the 90s when the gang stuff happened and they started a program, a mentoring program to work with young men who were in, affiliated with gangs. Homewood is one of the, the crip neighborhoods of the East Coast dating back to the 1990s and to 91. There are multiple step, sets that feud with each other. They also feud with other gangs in the neighborhood. Gangs came about in the crack era. The crack era, parents weren't home. A lot of my friends' parents were on drugs and were in the streets, strung out and stuff. So, and were barely coming home and selling food stamps and stuff like that. So with, with, with the atmosphere being like that, we went to gangs for family purposes. We were having fun in the 90s. Okay. You guys don't know what fun is. <laughs> no, you guys don't know what fun is. We could go to the park and play all night long. You guys can't do that because you got to look over your shoulders. I didn't have to look over my shoulder then. We could have a house party and party all night long. You guys can't do that because somebody's going to shoot. Yeah, the 90s was beautiful. Now is misery. It's a good question. All of that history and all of that stuff, it still gets ignored from the outside. I didn't know much about Homewood up until I got maybe a little bit older, like your age. Um, so kind of, you know, learning what this community was about and who was living here and why I didn't learn about this community until I was older. And if I had the power to change Homewood, There's many things I'd like to change. <laughs> I want to see us stop the drugs, stop, stop shooting at each other. Crime, vacant lots of pimps, hustlers, drug dealers. In Homewood, there are 600 vacant lots and 2,000 vacant homes, two players, two rec centers, limited access to after store programs. The corner, that corner been like that since the 60s. If they come off the street corners, the youth can take upon their hands and grow. Now, I'm going to say something about that corner. Because you end up up on that corner don't mean your life is over. It don't mean that you're a failure. It don't mean that you're a loser. It just means that that's the stage of life of where you're at right now. Now, choosing to stay in that stage of life is another thing. They don't have nothing to lose no more. They've been there all their life. I used to be there, and I know how it feels, and I know how I feel now. When you're going and doing time and coming back and still doing the same thing, it's idiotic. I can't fool with that, and I can't co-sign that. Sometimes it's difficult to uh, explain when something is out of your control. Uh, so sometimes some of the things I work on 
the city needs to be involved or other organizations need to be involved and they kind of have a say also on what things happen. And I think sometimes residents uh, don't know that. Instead of preventative measures to stop things, it's band-aids after things have already started. And it's a system that's thriving off of poverty. Poverty is the way that they make their living. So why would they want poverty to end? Why would they want Homewood to be better? That way solutions never get solved and they get pacified and people still earn easy paychecks. It's your turn. It's, you go, it's all of you's turn, really. You have to want to do it, but it can come back. It can be better, but you gotta want to, you gotta want to have it. If we could cut through the BS and get to the real issues and solve them with, and that takes real money and real resources, then we'll get somewhere. So that's my biggest con. So the idea for the Junior Green Corps came from um, our past associate director, his name was Evans Moore, came with an idea of taking three of the issues that we had in our community, which were um, crime, vacant lots, and nothing for um, youth to do. So he mirrored two of those together, taking vacant lots and, and a program for youth and, and created the Junior Green Corps. I like Junior Green Corps. Junior Green Corps dug out and built the rain garden behind you. I let them pick the plants. I told them what colors I liked and they picked the plants to go in the rain garden. And they came up and helped me maintain it the first summer that I had it. So helping people would fix up their front yards, board up old houses. You know, in most African-American communities, sidewalks were a mess. So just like working with the city to get that kind of stuff done. I found kids that are into the environment and, and into learning about uh, uh, preserving the earth and being close to the earth and stuff and learning how to better ourselves and live healthy and live better. Kids that are into stuff like that tend to be bright kids that are into uh, exploring and knowing more about the world and being accepting and embracing of new information. So every time I come and speak to this group, it's exactly what I said. They're open to new information. They're reflective. They got questions. I mean, they embrace the information and we end up building a bond that's pretty much unbreakable. I see the kids all over the place and it's nothing but love. I want to see more young people involved in Junior Green Corps. We could raise the money if we could get more people involved. One of the things you all may not realize at this early stage of being in Junior Green Corps is it can take you into forestry. So what I want to see is that Operation Better Block you know, last another 50 or 100 years. And so with a legacy organization that not every African-American community may have, it's very important that we guard it and we keep it safe so that it can continue on.